Hello, I am starting off with a chapter called Mr. Brown's October Precept. Mr. Brown's precept for October was, your deeds are your monuments. He told us that this was written on the tombstone of some Egyptian guy that died thousands of years ago. Since we were just about to start studying ancient Egypt and history, Mr. Brown thought this was a good idea for a precept. Our homework assignment was to write a paragraph about what we thought the precept meant or how we felt about it. This is what I wrote. This precept means that we should be remembered for the things we do. The things we do are the most important things of all. They are more important than what we say or what we look like. The things we do outlast our mortality. The things we do are like monuments that people build to honor heroes after they've died. They are like the pyramids that the Egyptian built, Egyptians built to honor the pharaohs. Only instead of being made out of stone, they're made out of memories people have of you. That's why your deeds are like your monuments, built with memories instead of with stone. This chapter is called Apples. My birthday is October 10th. I like my birthday, 1010. It would have been great if I was born at exactly 1010 in the morning or at night, but I wasn't. I was born just after midnight, but I still think my birthday is cool. I usually have a little party at home, but this year I asked mom if I could have a big bowling party. Mom was surprised, but happy. She asked me who I wanted to ask for my class, and I said everyone in my home room plus Summer. That's a lot of kids, Augie, said mom. I'll have to invite everyone because I don't want anyone to get their feelings hurt if they find out other people are invited and they aren't, okay? Okay, Mom agreed. You even want to invite the, what's the deal, kid? Yeah, you can invite Julian, I answered. Jeez, Mom, you should forget about that already. I know, you're right. A couple of weeks later, I asked Mom who was coming to my party, and she said, Jack will, Summer, Reed Kingsley, both Maxes, and a couple of other kids said they were going to try and be there. Like who? Charlotte's mom said Charlotte had a dance recital earlier in the day, but she was going to try and come to your party if allowed, if time allowed. And Tristan's mom said he might come after his soccer game. So that's it, I said? That's like five people. That's more than five people, Augie. I think a lot of people just had plans already, mom answered. We were in the kitchen. She was cutting one of the apples we had just gotten at the farmer's market into teensy-weensy bites so I could eat it. What kind of plans? I asked. I don't know, Augie. We sent out the evites kind of late. Like, what did they tell you, though? What reasons did they give? Everyone gave different reasons, Augie. She sounded a bit impatient. Really, sweetie, it shouldn't matter what their reasons were. People had plans, that's all. What did Julian give as his reason, I asked. You know, said Mom. His mom was the only person who didn't RSVP at all. She looked at me. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I laughed because I thought she was making a joke, but then I realized she wasn't. What does that mean, I asked. Never mind. Now go wash your hands so you can eat. My birthday party turned out to be much smaller than I thought it would be, but it was still great. Jack, Summer, Reed, Tristan, and both Maxes from school. And Christopher came, too, all the way from Bridgeport with his parents. And Uncle Ben came, and Uncle Kate and Uncle Poe drove in from Boston, though Tata and Papa were in Florida for the winter. It was fun, because all the grown-ups ended up bowling in the lane next to ours. So it really felt like there were a lot of people there to celebrate my birthday. This chapter is called Halloween. At lunch the next day, Summer asked me what I was going to be for Halloween. Of course, I'd been thinking about it since last Halloween, so I knew right away. Boba Fett. You know, you can wear a costume to school on Halloween, right? No way, really? So long as it's politically correct. What, like no guns and stuff? Exactly. What about blasters? I think a blaster is like a gun, Augie. Oh, man, I said, shaking my head. Boba Fett has a blaster. 
At least we don't have to come like a character in a book anymore. In the lower school, that's what you had to do. Last year, I was the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz. But that's a movie, not a book. Hello, Summer answered. It was a book first. One of my favorite books in the world, actually. My dad used to read it to me every night in the first grade. When Summer talks, especially when she's excited about something, her eyes squint like she's looking right at the sun. I hardly ever see Summer during the day, since the only class we have together is English. But ever since that first lunch at school, we've sat at the summer table together every day, just the two of us. So, what are you going to be? I asked her. I don't know yet. I don't know what I really want to go as, but I think it might be too dorky. You know, Savannah's group isn't even wearing costumes this year. They think we're too old for Halloween. What? That's just dumb. I know, right? I thought you didn't care what those girls think. She shrugged and took a long drink of her milk. So, what dorky thing do you want to dress up as? I asked her, smiling. Promise not to laugh? She raised her eyebrows and had her, sh and her shoulders embarrassed. A unicorn. I smiled and looked down at my sandwich. Hey, you promise not to laugh, she laughed. Okay, okay, I said. But you're right, that is too dorky. I know, she said, but I have it all planned out. I make the head out of paper mache and paint the horn gold and make the mane too. It would be so awesome. Okay, I shrugged, then you should do it. Who cares what other people think, right? Maybe what I'll do is just wear it for the Halloween parade, she said, snapping her fingers. And I'll be, like, a goth girl for school. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'll do. Sounds like a plan, I nodded. Thanks, Augie, she giggled. You know, that's what I like best about you. I can tell you anything. Yeah, I answered, nodding, and gave her a thumbs up sign. Cool beans. This chapter is called School Pictures. I don't think anyone will be shocked to learn I don't want to have my school picture taken on October 22nd. No way. No thank you. I stopped letting anyone take pictures of me a while ago. I guess you could call it a phobia. No, actually, it's not a phobia. It's an aversion, which is a word I just learned in Mr. Brown's class. I have an aversion to having my picture taken. There, I used it in a sentence. I thought Mom would try to get me to drop my aversion to having my picture taken for school, but she didn't. Unfortunately, while I managed to avoid having the portrait taken, I couldn't get out of being part of the class picture. Ugh. The photographer looked like he had just sucked on a lemon when he saw me. I'm sure he thought I ruined the picture. I was one of the ones in the front, sitting down. I, did not, I didn't smile, not that anyone could tell if I had. Okay, this last chapter I'm going to read is called The Cheese Touch. I noticed not too long ago that even though people were getting used to me, no one would actually touch me. I didn't realize this at first because it's not like kids going around touching each other that much in middle school anyway. But last Thursday in dance class, which is like my least favorite class, Mrs. Atanabi, the teacher, tried to make me and a chin be my dance partner. Now, I'd never actually seen someone have a panic attack before, but I have heard about it, and I'm pretty sure Mina had a panic attack at that second. She got really nervous and turned pale and literally broke into a sweat within a minute, and then she came up with some lame excuse about having to go to the bathroom. Anyway, Mrs. A let her off the hook, because she ended up not making anyone dance together. Then yesterday in my science elective, we were doing this cool mystery powder investigation where we had to classify a substance as an acid or a base. Everyone had to heat their mystery powders on a heating plate and make observations, so we were all huddled around the powders with our notebooks. Now, there are eight kids in the elective, and seven of them were squished together on one side of the plate, while one of them, me, had loads of room on the other side. So of course I noticed this, but I was hoping Mrs. Rubin wouldn't notice this, because I didn't want her to say something. But of course she did notice this, and of course she said something. Guys, there's plenty of room on that side. 
Tristan, Nino, go over there, she said. So Tristan and Nino scooted over to my side. Tristan and Nino have always been okay nice to me. I want to go on record as saying that. Not super nice, like they go out of their way to hang out with me, but okay nice. Like they say hello to me and talk to me like normal. And they didn't even make a face when Mrs. Rubin told them to come to my side, which a lot of kids do when they think I'm not looking. Anyway, everything was going fine until Tristan's mystery powder started melting. He moved his foil off the plate just as my powder began to melt too, which is why I went to move mine off the plate, and then my hand accidentally bumped his hand for a fraction of a second. Tristan jerked his hand away so fast he dropped his foil on the floor, while also knocking everyone else's foil off the heating plate. Tristan! yelled Mrs. Rubin, but Tristan didn't even care about the spilled powder on the floor or that he ruined the experiment. What he was concerned about was getting to the lab sink to wash his, ha to wash his hands as fast as possible. That's when I knew for sure that there was this thing about touching me at Beecher Prep. I think it's like the cheese touch in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. The kids in that story were afraid they'd catch cooties if they touched the old moldy cheese on the basketball court. At Beecher Prep, I'm the old moldy cheese. Okay, guys, thanks for listening. See you later.